This is Mike Flynn for the Ovation community, and with us today is arguably the expert uh, in the, the whole subject of open innovation, uh, Professor Henry Chesborough um, at the Haas Business School at UC Berkeley, and also director of the uh, Garwood Center for Innovation. Is that close enough? That's great. Cool. So maybe we can start with a little bit of, of history, Henry. Sure. Um, you coined the term open innovation in 2003. So what do you think were the drivers that really um, led to your initial research and then further led companies to really pursue this whole concept of, of open innovation? So I think there are the sort of two parts to that. What, what uh, drove the phenomena of open innovation and uh, what, what inspired me yeah. to write about it? So uh, maybe I'll, I'll take those in sequence. I think the drivers that are forcing companies to open up their innovation processes um, relate to the fact that there's a lot of useful knowledge all over the world now and that even in the biggest and very best companies, with all the very bright people that work there, there are just a whole lot more really bright people who don't. Uh, this is something Bill Joy talked about uh, many years ago. And it really, I think, comes to the fore when you're thinking about how to access and then make use of real useful and powerful knowledge uh, from people everywhere, both inside your organization and especially outside. Right. Your organization. So I think that was the, the fundamental driver. And what inspired me to do it was a combination of watching companies that were doing tremendously good R&D stumble again and again in getting value from their innovation investments. Whether it was IBM in the era of the mainframe and into the PCs or Intel um, struggling uh, for years and years before they hit on the Pentium chip. Right. Uh, and even today, Intel in the communications business is still having a terrible time. Um, or Xerox, with the work that they did on the man-machine interface, the user interface software that was created at PARC. Um, the, the problem was not the technology. The technology was often outstanding. Right. Um, but it wasn't, it was either too much or too late, or too expensive, and something else that was maybe a little more adapted, maybe a little less expensive, or maybe a new business model that really transformed the way that people use technology, these things were allowing much smaller companies uh, in the PC business in the old days of Intel and Microsoft vis-a-vis -vis IBM, uh, Cisco relative to you know, Lucent and Bell Laboratories. Um, these kinds of companies were able to do better and better. And so that's, I think, where, the, where it all started. Well, and speaking of, you know, kind of the agile, almost entrepreneurial, you know, venture type companies, in a way, they really have begun or already have, for sure, put large enterprises on the defensive. And so, you know, what kinds of, of changes do you see typically that, you know, organizations, whether it's an SAP or, or other large firms, be it software or hardware, what kinds of, of things do they really have to think about as they take on these much more agile um, entrepreneurs? So the agile phenomenon is becoming very powerful, as you say, not only on the technical side in terms of a methodology of software development, but also on the business model side, as uh, people like Steve Blank are creating customer development processes that work in tandem with agile development methods. And so it really all starts with customers and what customers need. And it's not that the agile companies are smarter or that they have more money or that they have better technology. None of that is true. But what they are able to do is to turn quickly. Okay. And as they get new knowledge, um, they're able to take advantage of it, push it back to their potential customers and say, is this what you meant? And then uh, they'll get some more input, and then two or three weeks later, there'll be another iteration. And how about this? And so it's, they start from uh, vastly inferior positions, but because of their ability to evolve rapidly, 
and to target specific customers that are willing to pay for what they've got today. Uh, they really are, I think, forcing much larger companies with legacy assets, legacy customers, and burdens that the small companies don't have uh, to still keep up with those small companies.